I wish somebody would have just come up to me and said, you know, I know you think we're not, and, you know, some sort of dangerous cult, but you know what? We've got the best thing on earth, and we've got we've got apostles and prophets and the restored church, and it, it's not what you think. It's incredible. Why don't you come on over for dinner? We'll watch Monday Night Football, and afterwards we can have a chat about it. And and that's that's the function of the accusation is to intimidate the saints into not letting their light shine boldly. We all have to open our mouths and testify to what great things we've been given. Right now, tell me who you are, get in the car. Right now, you the stars, I want it all. Right now. The, way you, the, the only right answer now. for the accusatory fog, the accusatory right fog now. is the mist of darkness, okay? What do you do if you want to get rid of darkness? You got to turn the light on, man. We, we have to let our light shine. And um, I think an awful lot of Latter-day Saints, they, they kind of keep their light under a bushel. They're, mm. they're not, I don't think they're nearly as excited and open about their excitement. Yo, as New they Age Quaker, is this eat. vibing with you, dog? I feel like this is going to be like straight up your alley, my let man. Let your light shine. Oh, sorry. Keep go- I, I got distracted and we were back. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we're back. We're recording wait, wait. now. What happened? Who, where? How do we let our light? He says, get rid of the fog by letting your light shine. How do we let our light shine? Okay, well, I'll give you an example. Since I actually got involved with the Latter-day Saints, I hear all these apocryphal stories about people that convert. You know, they're they're in a workplace. Um, they go through a crisis. They end up doing an investigation with some missionaries and become a Latter-day Saint. And then they find out that one of their co-workers that they greatly admired for the previous year, eight years, was a Latter-day Saint, and they didn't even know it. Yeah, sure. That's nuts. That huh. is just absolutely nuts. You know, I, I mean, I wish. I, I, I mean, I was poisoned by the accusatory fog. I, I did not know how to listen to a Latter-day Saint as a human being. I did not know how to do that. I wish somebody would have just come up to me and said, you know, I know you think we're not, and, you know, some sort of dangerous cult, but you know what? We've got the best thing on earth, man. We've got we've got apostles and prophets and the restored church, and it, it's not what you think. It's incredible. Why don't you come on over for dinner? We'll watch Monday Night Football, and afterwards we can have a chat about it. it it's like... It, what you, you know, you'd think over 47 years, I had constant interactions with Latter-day Saints. You all are out there. You're in the culture. You're not like off in some compound somewhere. And uniformly, my encounters with Latter-day Saints, they were very nice. They're always they were always nice. But n- none of them were ever like, you know what? You know, we got something amazing. I wish I, you'd let me tell you about it. It, it's like it's kind of like yeah it's like the evil one he constantly throws accusation into the hearts and souls of the whole world about the latter-day saints but he constantly throws accusation at the latter-day saints and if he can't actually poison them enough with his accusations to get them to lose their childlike faith and leave the covenant path and fall away at least he can intimidate them into mm. not sticking their heads up mm. you know like like a turtle mm. you know the, the turtle keeps his head inside if he because he doesn't yeah. he doesn't want to stick his neck up lest he make a target out of himself and and that's that's the function of the accusation is to intimidate the saints into not mm. letting their light shine boldly and and not like like uh, President Nelson says in his talk, overcome the world and find rest. He says, look, one of the keys to overcoming the world, which of course is the accusatory fog. It's the the Satan is the prince of the power of the air, and and the whole world is in his lap. So the the accusatory fog is generated by and comes from the world, you know, and it's it's like the only the only the only answer is to 
boldly, as President Nelson said, delight in the truth and denounce deception. It's it's like if 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 you that's have the, our new motto: the, delight in the truth, denounce deception. That's it. We are now that's sponsored, that's well, and paid for by Russell M. Nelson, both financially <laughs> endorsed and spiritually <laughs> endorsed. David, you you said what what you're describing kind of sounds like uh, when Speed Read Dan. He said the restored gospel is a unicorn disguised as a pony with a birthday cap over its horn. It's actually something amazing, but you wouldn't necessarily know it when you meet a member of the church because right. by and large, in, at least in the United States, we're accountants and dentists. We're kind of quiet. We're just kind of there. Yeah. We drive yeah. minivans. You that just, yeah, it's just a donkey with a little birthday cap, and you get close uh. and you go, Wait a minute! This is a unicorn. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 You, you don't. You don't like. We, we ought to be shouting what we have from the housetops. We ought to be. How? But how, how can our you, viewers? You, can't, you cannot like like um, like Paul said in First Corinthians chapter one. He says, "Look, since the world in its wisdom doesn't come to know God, and you could paraphrase it, since the world in its wisdom." thinks the restoration is a bunch of garbage and completely dismisses it as a big nothing burger, okay? It pleased God through the foolishness of preaching to save those that believe. It's like, unless you're willing to lift up your voice and proclaim what you have, nobody's going to know it because they just accept this, this monolithic conversation of accusatory dismissiveness mm -hmm. about the most glorious thing on earth, the whole world is being flooded with deep darkness and there's an ark man there's an ark <laughs> there's an ark and there's only one it, it's like and and people are out there floating around grabbing a hold of driftwood and broken dinghies and capsized <laughs> ocean liners and being chewed on by sharks and and you know yeah, we're yeah. sitting here on in the ark and we're like yeah we're nice and you know we're respectable and yeah um, so so how do so how do your viewers like, how do your viewers and how do our viewers share their testimonies more boldly? How do we do it? Any kind of a potluck for testimonies we can join? <laughs> well, I can tell you about that in a minute. But so it, it, like on my ch my channel, I just I just started pouring out my heart and putting up videos, and then I'm like. You know, everybody needs to do this. You can do this. Just sit down, man. Open your computer or, st you know, prop up your iPhone and just pour out your heart and send it to me. I'll put it up. Because it says in Revelation that the accuser of the brethren is cast down by the blood of the Lamb, the power of the atonement, and the word of our testimony, and loving not our lives unto the death. So, you know, it's like we all have to open our mouths and testify to what great things we've been given and get it out there. And and this is something we have to use our agency to actually do. And the analogy is it's such a hoot. Like a you hoot. Read the book of we got the soup and nuts <laughs> and a hoot. I'm loving this. You need to yeah. read me freaking my scriptures at night to my kids. This is awesome. <laughs> Nehemiah, you know, the one and a half, just piles of Jews ended up being taken into captivity in Babylon. After the 70 years was up, the king of Babylon said, OK, you can go back. I'll even give you the, what you need to rebuild Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. Only 4% of them responded. The rest of them were like, we like it here. We're not going back to that ruin. Yeah. But the 4% that went back, uh, Nehemiah went and rallied them to rebuild the wall. And like, you know, I mean, the jewelers up there with his three daughters rebuilding part of the wall. Huh. There wasn't a single mason in the bunch. You read it and just all the way around the wall. Just everybody was up there. And see, this is every block. It's like, you know, it's it's like the testimonies of the 17 million Latter-day Saints need to be proclaimed to the world. I like it. And we have to use our agency to do that. But there's a there's something. It's more than that. In the dispensation of the fullness of times, it's going to happen because it says in um, Isaiah 60, this this is the time we live in, Matthew 24. We live in the time when uh, 
we're in the beginning of sorrows, earthquakes, famines, pestilences, all this stuff. And then, you know, many will be offended and betray one another and hate one another. He that endures to the end will be saved. This gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then, then the end will come. And then there's going to be a time of great trouble, such as the world has never be, seen before and never will see again. Obamacare. And we live. We <laughs> yeah. live in the time of this, and I know it's it's a bit it's a bit hard to be humorous about this, but but it's exciting because what happens in this time that we're r- racing into headlong is what it describes in Isaiah 60. It says that at the end of 59, it says that that. Uh, Darkness will come in like a flood, and the Lord will raise up a standard against it. Then at the beginning of Isaiah 60, it says, Arise and shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Behold, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon thee, and his glory will be seen upon thee. And kings will come to your to your arising and to the brightness of your and gen, the gentiles to the brightness of your dawn it's like it's like the world is absolutely going nuts into deep darkness but what that means is heavenly father like president nelson has so clearly said in the days to come the the glory and the power and the the rising of the light of zion is going to have, I'm paraphrasing his words, of course, is going to rise in a way that has never been seen in the history of the earth. Like if you look in the book of a guy, it talks, this is like a, a type or a, an analogy. You know, the one temple was destroyed and they were trying to rebuild the temple and they were all discouraged. And the prophet, uh, the prophet had guys says, look, the glory of the latter temple will be greater than that of the former, you know, uh, and, and, and this is these are the days we live in. So the Holy Ghost is in the process of stirring the hearts of saints all over the world to rise up and let their light shine. OK, and this isn't just it's something that it's just something we have to cooperate with. We don't have to do it on our own. That's all I'm trying to say. OK, it. so we're already in bonus time and we're already over time here. Uh, we're going to have to wrap this, this up. Awesome. Soon. But I do have two questions for you. First off, what was that phrase you said? We have to debate for the or what was that phraseology you used? Oh, defend the truth and delight. We had delight, delight in, in the President truth. President Nelson said a key to overcoming the world is to delight in the truth. And to denounce deception. Denounce deception. And of course, deception. those things are two sides of the same coin. And, you know, it's easier to not do either one of those things, especially the second. By the way, um, I've just totally figured out the new motto for wardradio.com. Oh. You know how all the boomers got angry that we used to call ourselves Midnight Mormons? And they always got pissed off about, you know, ah, your name is not spiritual enough or else, ah, you're too combative or whatever. I'm literally making our logo to say delighting in truth, denouncing deception. Boom. And then if they don't Boom. dig it, we'll just be like, oh, well, what part of President Nelson's uh, commendation? Yeah, don't you to like? De- de- delight yeah. in truth and denounce <laughs> deception. What part of that do you don't like? Huh? Why, 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 why? You know, that's pretty awesome. So I, I love that you're doing this, David, that you're wafting away the accusatory fog with your own testimony. You know, like and share, David. Like and share this video. Whoa, whoa, hold on. We're not done yet. One last question. One last question. So you got baptized four months ago is what you're saying, right, bro? Right. A little less. Up to 20th of March. Okay. So what do you think so far? You're 90 days in. You're 120 days in. You haven't become oh, a rabbit hey, in acting. Like- you know, like. The restoration, the restoration of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints is the most incredible thing on earth, and nothing. Even well, what makes it so much more incredible, dude, bro? You were sitting on a beach memorizing the Book of John. Your spirituality is obviously like sky high, baby. You're doing more with your your, your basic bro Bible than ninety percent of us lifetime members have in terms of memorizing Scripture, praying every day, developing a personal relationship with God. Like you were already flying high. Like what makes the restoration I wasn't so much high. cooler? I wasn't flying high. I, you can memorize the whole Bible, but if you don't have a way to enflesh it. Wow. It's, you'd be better off not to know than to know and not have the power to do. Wow. Without without priesthood, 
without outside of the Latter Day Saints, there is not the the authority apostolic and prophetic covering and priesthood authority to actually speak and act for God, man. Oof. It doesn't exist out there. Everybody pretends that it does. And, <laughs> you know, if you're not good at pretending, I'm a terrible pretender. All you do, if you can imagine, just an analogy, suppose suppose you, when I was 21, instead of deciding I really wanted to be a wholehearted disciple, I decided my passion is law enforcement. But I, I couldn't find any way to connect with anybody that could actually give me authority to enforce the law. But I spent 47 years trying to enforce the law without proper authority. Mm. What would I do? I mean, I'd just yeah. make a mess. You'd feel empty. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like there's. Or no it'd make way. a really sick movie script. Or you'd yeah. go rogue. <laughs> yeah, you'd was... go rogue like so, Jean Claude Van Damme in 1980s full circle, action movie. Chiasmus. Nah. <laughs> what what I needed, it's like we have to have human beings were social creatures. The gospel is meant to gather a people like Christ prayed for in John 17, that all who truly believe in him through the apostles' teaching would be one, just as the Father and the Son are one that the world would believe. This is the holy nation that Christ said had to happen when he told the Jews that in Matthew 21, 43, look, the kingdom, it's going to be taken away from you. It's going to be given to a nation that will bring forth the fruit of it. Or as Peter says in um, 1 Peter 2, verse 9 and 10, he says, you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart. It's like, I need, I need, I needed to find the foundation of a covenant path that actually has a roadbed of apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ as a chief cornerstone. Because what it's what what Christ actually said, see the evangelical Christianity I was brought into is you've got to receive Jesus, you've got to receive Jesus. And I was excited to do that because the Gospel of John chapter one verse twelve says as many as receive him, he gives the power to become sons of God. And I'm like, yes, let's do that. Yeah. But then all through the gospels, Christ says, look, to his apostles, he says, look, he who receives you receives me and him who sent me. He who rejects you rejects me and him who sent me. So there's no fullness of the gospel and there's no authority to actually be gathered into Zion, you know, be gathered into that royal priesthood and that holy nation apart from finding what you have. Amen. Yeah. All Amen. right. Okay. So, I mean, we could talk to you all day. It's unfortunately, yeah. you're just like balling I, I, it up. But I, I can go on like this for hours. <laughs> Sitting next to you I in Elder's Quorum must be a gas. Must be hey, awesome. did you like, that was my cool 1920s phrase. You're a, it must be a gas, <laughs> a gas. to sit next to you in, uh, you know, um, Elder's I have, Quorum. I have to really restrain myself because otherwise I just, I just, you know. I talk way too much. You know, did you discipline your children with a lot of scripture? Like I can imagine being a, you know, a, 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 you know, when he's, when, when the young men are running through the hallways and they're being too loud, you know, he probably just starts quoting scripture at them. Yeah. They, do you have a calling, yeah. David? Yeah. What's your calling, bro? I haven't received, I haven't received a calling yet. What? Sure what? They know what, to, what? I'm not sure if they know what to do with me. <laughs> do everything you know? with you. What's that? I would do everything with you. Yeah, really? dude, scripture. Hey. I'd make you bishop right now. I'd be like, hey, dude, just go over there. We need a new bishop. Move, move back tired. to America. Hey, my, We've got callings real, waiting for it. My real calling, my, I, think, I think right now my real calling is probably just to, to throw up, uh, to toss up uh, one or two videos a day from my man. Okay, well, speaking of which, and, this, is, and, this is your outro. Get on mutual and, and find the right one. Uh, we'll get uh, you on mutual. Right now. Get in the car right now.